goodness, the evening must be wearing on me more than I thought. Even my purse seems heavy. A knife? In my bag? It's even flecked with blood. And what's this? A ring? It looks decidedly pricey, but it's not one of mine. How did it get here? For just a moment, I was confused. But then the gruesome sight of Titanico's body flooded my thoughts, and the truth hit me. I was being set up. Almost certainly, what I held in my hands was the knife that had stabbed the prince. I don't know how it got in my purse, but whoever put it there had made a mistake. Because if there's one thing I know for sure, it's that anyone who tries to frame me for murder is going to regret it. I'd helpfully noted the garish red color of the bed the first time we visited the room, but this time, something looked off. Near the top of the bed, the color looked darker than before. I reached beneath the pillows, and sure enough, it was a knife with a distinctively wavy blade, a blade that was covered with blood. I'd wager a good portion of my last husband's life insurance that the blood belonged to Prince Titanico himself. So, there hadn't been just one knife, but two. But which one had stabbed the prince? Or had they both? My discovery seemed to have led to more questions than answers, but one way or another, I was certain that this was a critical piece in the puzzle of the prince's death. we hear? There's an extra wire clip to the back of the phone. I'm quite certain this sort of phone doesn't normally need more than one wire. Let's just leave it alone for now, shall we? breaker room to shut off the lights during my high school exams. You can use it to flip a breaker switch at a predetermined time. The question is, just what is it doing here? I'm starting to think our little blackout earlier might have been no accident after all. The police weren't yet here, but it made no matter. I had seen everything I needed to see. It was time to lay this mystery to rest and expose the guilty party for all to see. I do so love it when someone other than me gets their comeuppance. Hmm. Wonderful. Everyone's here. I guess that means we can begin. Begin, uh, what exactly? Why, exposing the murderer, of course. You mean, you know who it is? Of course I do, my dear. Don't you? I, well, no. I'm not sure. At least not yet. Hmm, pity. You were the one who said we had to see the truth for ourselves or something, weren't you? Well, it's a good thing that at least one of us has been busy this past little while. Come now, darling, you simply can't keep us in suspense like this. Are you going to tell us or not? Yeah, after all this, it better be good. Not that I'm getting my hopes up or anything, mind you. Tut tut. All in good time, my dear little girl. First, we all need to agree on some basic facts. Mr. Klops, you've been posted out in front of the house ever since we found the body, yes? 
Yes, ma'am. That's right. And did you see anyone leaving the house? Or anybody hanging about at all? No, ma'am. There was no one there. And nobody would have got past me, that's for sure. No, I'm sure they wouldn't. That glowering gaze of yours alone would be enough to send them scurrying back the way they came. As for the rest of us, did anyone find any trace of a break-in? Broken windows? Muddy footprints? Anything at all? Hmm, indeed not. I saw nothing of the sort, and if I might say so, a magician's eyes are trained to spot even the smallest of details. I didn't see anything either. Not a thing. Ah, oh, good then. So we agree. Nobody else has entered or left the house, which means that the killer is one of us, right here in this room. Hmm. <laughs> Darling, this is just too much. If you make us wait even a moment more, I shall need a glass of brandy and a bottle of smelling salts. Oh, I'll take more orange juice. Uh, if someone is getting drinks, that is. Yes, sir. But first, how about we hear who did it? This is it, then. There's no going back. It's time to end this. Whoever I point to now is not going to be terribly pleased with me. But that's fine, as I'm not terribly pleased with them either. If they wanted to have half a chance of getting away with this... They made a most misfortunate choice in trying to frame me. It was you, Horatio. You killed Prince Titanico. D me? A misfortune, surely you jest. Horatio, my dear, I think we all agree that if anyone here is a jester, it's definitely you. No, 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 no. I am not a jester, a wizard, a sorcerer, a warlock, if you will. I'm absolutely sure we've been over this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grand goofus of the court or whatever it was. Can we get to the point? Why do you think he did it? D yes, uh, why would I kill my oldest and closest friend, hmm? I am more distraught by this terrible affair than anyone, completely and... Utterly distraught. Hmm, yes, motive. To answer that question, I think we need to first understand why we're all here for this little party at all. Before he left us for the last time, the prince said that he would return with an announcement. I have an inkling of what it might have been. From the beginning, I've had the nagging impression that this entire evening was a show staged for just one special someone. That someone is you, Miss Cherise. A show? For me? Yes, for you. It's no secret to any of us at this point that you and the prince had been, shall we say, stepping out as of late. And so the climax to the prince's little drama is obvious. He was going to ask for your hand in marriage. That's why he had this with him, isn't it? <clears throat> hey, where'd you get that? <laughs> now, now. All in good time. For now, it's enough to prove the prince's intent. You don't look surprised, my dear. No. Not completely surprised, anyway. My, my. A grand public proposal, then. That's my friend. He was always such an incurable romantic. Romantic? Oh, you poor naive boy. This was nothing of the sort. It was a cold, calculated move designed by the prince to get the result he wanted. Whisk the object of his affections out of her element into a strange and unfamiliar house, frighten her with ghost stories all evening, and then make a sweeping public proposal in front of a group of high society strangers like myself and the Comtessa. Oh yes, indeed. What girl wouldn't want all of that, I ask you?
Horatio, my friend, tonight will be the night. I have arranged a nice little soiree at the Lee Manor. Just a small affair, so as to be intimate, but with guests that my beloved does not know well. The setting should be perfect. And you're going to propose right there, in front of everyone? <laughs> yes, when the time is right. Of course, we must set the mood first. A flash of lightning, a clap of thunder. A macabre historical tidbit or two. And uh, perhaps a little surprise, courtesy of your talents. Just to add a little more flair. Why, of course. I can conjure up just a thing for you, I'm sure. But do you really think this will work? <laughs> My dear friend, how little you understand of the fair sex. This girl, she is pure as the fallen snow. She only sees the best in everyone. We have nothing to fear. She will be as putty in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I really must confess, it was all quite masterfully done. Rejecting a proposal under such circumstances would be unbelievably awkward, both socially and psychologically. Not a bad one to remember for my own books, I think. This is all pure conjecture and, I might add, completely ridiculous. <laughs> yes, you would be quite the authority on the ridiculous, wouldn't you? Mm, uh -hh. But... All of that as it may, you still have yet to get to the part where I have even the slightest reason to kill anybody. Is that so? I rather thought by this point that would be obvious. It's the oldest tale in the book, really. Two men, one beautiful, charming, and extraordinarily wealthy young girl. You couldn't let Titanico marry Charisse because you wanted to marry her yourself. That's... that's... All of your life, you've lived in your friend's shadow, haven't you? And here he was, planning to marry a dream wife under your very nose. It was too much. He had to be stopped. She had to be yours. Well, well, no, 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 you see, you, 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 you look here. While, of course, I have nothing but admiration for Miss Charisse, I, I mean, it's just, as you say, who wouldn't? But the incontrovertible point here is... How could I possibly have killed the prince when I was the one in the basement busily fixing the lights at the time? Ah, excellent. So we've moved on from the why to the how. Indeed. How was the prince killed after all? How? Don't we know how? Took a shiv right to the back. I'm not so sure it's that simple. <laughs> to be fair, we can't really fault Mr. Klops here for seeing only half the picture. The prince was stabbed, yes. But is that what killed him? I think that the prince... was attacked in quite a clever way, really. He was stabbed, yes, but that wasn't until he was already dead, or very close to it. First, he was electrocuted. Electrocuted? Good heavens! You mean, the bad wiring? Oh, no. This was no accident. If you check the phone closely, you'll see it's got this rather sneaky extra wire hooked up to it. The phone's an older model with a metal casing, so if the wire was live... Uh, I get it. The prince got shocked by the phone and tumbled off the balcony. And broke his leg from the fall. After that, he was stabbed, too. It's monstrous. Hang on, but I picked up that phone. I didn't get shocked. No, because at that point the wire wasn't live. But someone could have turned it on in the meantime. 
Someone in the breaker room. Uh. So when I told the boss about the call in the dining room and he went to go get it... Exactly. By the time he reached the phone, the wire was live. Now, now, now just wait one minute here. Since I was down in the breaker room at the time, how could I possibly have timed all of this so precisely? There's no way anyone could hear the phone ringing from the basement. It's true, we didn't even hear it from the dining room. My dear Horatio, I can't believe that I'm the one reminding us of all of this. But you are a magician. You had it all planned out from the beginning. Getting the timing right was easy because... You were the one to tip off the caller. That call came from a financial auditor. A rather fastidious one who had been expressly asked to call at precisely the time that she did. An auditor? Oh my word. Was the prince in trouble then? I simply had no idea. Of course you didn't. Masquerading at being successful was Titanico's main talent. And interesting theory, Miss Fortune. But you can't possibly have a shred of proof. And why would I tattle on my friend to a financial auditor? You said yourself, more than enough times, that you were the only one the prince would take into his confidence. So no doubt you knew of his troubles. As for why, didn't I mention that earlier? That was another reason you had to act now. You knew that once they were married, the prince planned to bleed poor little Charisse dry to pay off his creditors. No. Much better that he die now. And that his debts die with him. Well, what about the stabbing then? Uh, did I do that by remote too? At last. I think it's time to play my trump card. By slipping the knife and the ring into my bag, the killer had hoped to set me up. But that had been their biggest mistake. In reality, all they did was give me the evidence I need to put an end to this. Yes, stabbing. A bit curious, don't you think? Between the high-voltage shock and the fall, the prince was almost certainly finished already. Why take the risk to stab a man who was already dead? Uh, I give up. Why? Quite simply, because stabbing leaves a mark. A mark that would draw our attention away from the real method of death. And one that lets you plant incriminating evidence on another guest to take the fall for your misdeeds. Evidence like this. Hey, that's... There's blood on it. Misfortune, where did you... Why, I found it in my handbag, dear. Exactly where the killer wanted all of you to find it. So that's it then? That's the knife that stabbed the prince. Well... Actually, this isn't the knife that stabbed the prince. But we are meant to think that it was. But the blade... I'm sure it's a match for the wound. Indeed. But this knife has a twin. I found it hidden under the pillow in the queen bedroom. The Comtesse was there. She'll tell you the same. Oh, yes, indeed. And there was blood on it as well. In fact, wasn't that the very room you were in when the body was found, Comtesse? Tell me again. Who was it that came to get you then? It was Horatio. Oh! And you think Mr. Horatio stabbed the prince with that knife after shocking him from the breaker room? And then hid it in the bed where he found the Comtesse? Quite so. Hey, wait. That doesn't add up. Add up? Mr. Klops, I never would have guessed arithmetic was your strong suit. I found the boss, I mean the prince, almost as soon as the lights came on. So Horatio must have been back in the basement by then. Perhaps he hurried back here after finishing with the unseemly stabbing? No way. No time. It's quite a ways to the cellar. Running all the way up from there after shocking the phone, stabbing the boss... 
then all the way back down in time to flip the lights back on. All in the dark, too. Not a chance. Nah, ah, you see, Miss Fortune? Even Klops here can see that your version of events is complete nonsense. How are you going to explain this one? Simple. Magic. Uh-huh. You know, he doesn't really have magic, right? Oh, I assure you, this is magic of the most mundane variety. You see, down in the basement, there's a little timer hooked up to the breaker. That's what caused our blackout earlier, by the way. All part of the show to emotionally destabilize poor little Cherise here. But if that timer could be used to flip a breaker once, why not again? Oh, I see it. So Horatio goes to the basement. And instead of flipping the lights on right away, sets the timer again to turn them back on in a few minutes. Why aren't you the smartest little thing? Get your teacher to give you a gold star for that one. <laughs> yes, as you can see, he didn't have to make it all the way back to the basement. Just as far as the stairwell, so he could pretend to be coming back up. Yeah, I guess there'd be time, in that case. Well... If you're all good and finished, there's just one important fact I'd like to point out. Right now, you have that knife, and I don't. Even if there was a second knife, which you could very well have planted yourself, I might add, at some point, you seem to think I somehow gave you this one. Seeing as I've apparently been spending all of my time running back and forth from the basement, arranging that little trick sounds impossible. Even for my abilities? This is it. The last piece of the puzzle. Get this right, and the wizard's house of cards will collapse like the flimsy sham that it is. Of course. That's it. Everything comes back to that moment. That blackout was the key to the whole plan all along. That, my dear would-be wizard, is simplicity itself. It was during the perfect moment that you, yourself, have admitted to having engineered the blackout in the dining room. Don't worry, my dear. You are safe with me. Thank you. I was just a bit startled. Oh, heavens, yes. The light's going out. What horror. I dare say I may faint myself. Delicate flower that I am. Oh, please, Miss Fortune, allow me. I've got you now. Oh, what would we do without you? On second thought, you can unhand me. I seem to be quite all right. Uh. Yeah, I guess that was a little weird, wasn't it? He put the extra knife and the ring in your purse right then, when we could barely see anything. Just so. I have no doubt the blood on my knife belongs to the prince, but no doubt it was easy for Titanico's closest confidant to collect a little sample in advance. And as for the ring, well, we were meant to think that I took it off the prince. In fact, that's exactly where you thought it was, wasn't it, Mr. Klops? Me? What have I got to do with this? Mr. Klops, I'm sorry, but I saw you go into the hall when you found the body, and it seemed to me you were in there for a little too long. Not for long enough to kill a man, of course, but long enough to give his pockets a quick search for some valuable jewelry that you thought no one would miss. Well, I mean, it's not like he was gonna need it, right? Naturally not. But the prince was never carrying the ring himself, of course. That's a job you give to your best man. Although, perhaps in this case... I think worst man would be more appropriate. Wouldn't you say, Horatio? Yeah. 
You! How dare you! My sweet Charisse, don't listen to a word of it. Hey, back off, you creep. Don't you understand? He was only using you. It was I who was meant to be with you, not him. We would have been perfect together. This was the life I've been waiting for. This was the life I deserved. No. You're nothing but craven villains. You and the prince both. You deserve exactly the company you got. Each other. This fortune. This is all your fault. You ruined everything. Everything! You will regret this. You will feel the fire of a warlock's wrath! Ooh. That felt good. Mr. Klops, I don't know about your skills as a valet, but if I ever have need of a battering ram, I shall be most certain to give you a call. Very pleased to have been of service, ma'am. Goodness, after a finish like that, I shall need my doctor to prescribe me a sedative. Oh, my word. I think the police are here at last. I shall let them in. Gotta say, glad that's over. I have to wonder, though, did he really think Sherry would fall for him so easily after offing her old boyfriend? Hmm. A shared traumatic event. A grieving young girl, a sympathetic friend, and a third-party villain to blame for it all. I've seen more unlikely scenarios. And also, men who think very highly of themselves can have a lot of trouble believing not everyone thinks the same. They may have looked different, but Titanico and Horatio, they really were alike in many ways, I think. You really are smarter than you look. Have I told you that yet? You are too kind. <laughs> when I have compliments, the best you're ever going to get. May as well take it, I guess. <laughs> well, I fear that may be all the kindness I can muster for one evening. I imagine the police will want to take my statement. But after that, I hope Mr. Klops will be so good as to show me out with all haste. <clears throat> I think they'll be wanting the prince's ring back, too, ma'am. <laughs> oh, silly me. Did I put that back in my bag? It is a nice ring, I dare say. Say what you will about the prince, but he really did have good taste for certain things, at least. Ta-ta, then, everyone. just keep dropping dead, the poor dears. It's so hard to find a good man with stamina these days. Uh, no ma'am. I'm not a butler. Just a valet. Doc! You, you have it! Everyone, stay back! She's armed and very likely dangerous! I had heard she was seeing someone, but I never met. I never. I. 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 I never. I never met. <laughs> oh, 
Perhaps you preferred that your wife... No, that is your husband. You are the wife, and I am an idiot. Miss Fortune, you seem to be picking on Mr. Klops for no reason at all. Why would you do that? Yeah, nice place you got here. If you're liking attaining dead people, 